Hello, everyone. Welcome to the MUTV group chat. Now, we did uh, 57 of these shows with no football. Now we've got action to reflect on after uh, a thumping win for United last night against Sheffield United. And the lads are here. Wes, Maisie, Ben, Danny. Boys, everything okay? Yeah. Good. Good. Oh, good, Stu. Before, well, before we move on, actually, uh, Maisie, we have to reflect on a special birthday for you yesterday. Um, the big 5-0, how was it? It was a great win for United, but for you, how was it? Yeah, oh, it was a lovely day. Yeah. Uh, kids came around, cut me a lovely meal. Um, it was it was really, really nice. And obviously the weather was fantastic. So just just spent it in the garden, just um, a couple of drinks and um, a couple. Yeah. Well, right. I, I was last man standing, I put everyone to bed. So I was on my own eventually, but I had a great time. Some people kind of have a bit of a bit of a wobble when they get to forty. What about fifty? Uh, well, fifty is apparently the new forty. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like you know, being like fifteen stone. It's like the new ten, isn't it, Ben? For <laughs> 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 that, <laughs> uh, I had a fantastic day, Good. wonderful presents, and um, great time with the family. So, well, we've got some familiar faces to um, to send some messages in to you, mate, to, to mark your, your 50th. Let's just have a look what they had to say. Happy birthday, Maisie. 50 years of age, unbelievable. You've got to be one of the craziest, funniest guys that I've ever played with. Scary at times. Hope you have an unbelievable day, Maisie. Uh, miss you, love you, and uh, hope you have a great day. Happy 50th, Maisie. Uh, I'd have put money on that, but that was a few years ago, but that would be more money I would have lost. But um, Yep, have a great day, mate. Uh, look forward to seeing you soon for a, for a few pints. Uh, top man. Maisie, baby, I just wanted to wish you a happy 50th. It's only the first half. You've got the second half to go, baby. I wish you a beautiful day. Um, everything of the best for the future. Health, love. And uh, you know we get stronger the second half. So enjoy your day and... Uh, Hope to see you soon. You're a great lad. Everybody who knows you says so. Um, brilliant to be around. Happy 50th, mate. I hope you have a terrific day. You deserve it. Cheers, pal. So there you go, Maisie. So well regarded. Does that make you emotional, Maisie? Seeing this? Uh, do you know that, that's probably the nicest some some of the lads have ever you know said things to me. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. I never expected uh, those kind words. And Ben, you're a top lad. I love you, kid. In the club, the club put out a tweet, the official tweet. Everybody was making a fuss to you. I know, yeah, I know, and I think I think I managed to get around to thanking everybody and liking everybody's um, every, all the messages. So, thank you to everybody. I'm, I'm very, very privileged to have great friend, friends here doing this and uh, also be part of a magnificent club. Yeah, glad you had a good day, mate. Um, just before we move on, some reaction from Monday show uh, from, from YouTube. Um, this one from Elizabeth. Love these shows. Love the banter. Watch them throughout the lockdown. Glad they'll still be on and regular even when the football is on. Great show. Thanks for that, Elizabeth. Harry, um, if you can't make the time, don't do the crime. I think Stu and Wes should eat a whole lime on the show. That's a fair forfeit. Ooh. Not happening, Harry. Not I happening. Like Stu cannot get away with missing two episodes when some of the lads were missing. He was forcing himself so badly to get them to do something daft. Now it's your turn, big boy, says Don. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that. To, Is he thanks. Me up now, Stu? I know, I know. I don't recognise Don, but there you go. Uh, John says, fake crowd noise is extremely annoying to me. It's like the laughter track on comedies. And Ian, ambience is everything in sports. It, if it motivates the players, I'm all for it. It's like playing... Mozart in a greenhouse to make the plants grow better. I'm not a big fan, I have to say, not a big fan of the ambient noise, but there you go. Um, it was strange being at Old Trafford yesterday, of course, to see 40,000 digital faces looking at you, but no noise whatsoever. But it didn't seem to impact on United, lads, a 3 0 victory. Ben, you were there just reflecting on it now. That, I, I'm not sure we played much better than that this season over 90 minutes. No, I um, I thought some of the football we played was absolutely sublime, and obviously that culminated in uh, in Anthony Martial and his third goal. 
I think things had, had gone before and not they'd not quite been an end product. We think of the couple of chances that, that Marcus had that under normal circumstances he would put away. But you as as Daniel said, over the years, Sheffield United have have reacted really well to a, a heavy defeat and they got one on Sunday, but there was nothing there to suggest to me that they were they were at the races at all. And I don't know if that was the fact that they, they, they were just very leggy or that Manchester United made them Man United made them look very, very ordinary on the night and they played some great stuff. I thought that the performance uh, deserved the result. Dan, you were there as well, and as a striker yourself, uh, how impressed were you by Martial's hat-trick and his overall performance leading the line? I think what I was most impressed with is the scrappy goals that he scored. Obviously, the first two. It's, we've seen him score so many brilliant goals, like excellent goals for the club, but it's those little scrappy goals that are going to firstly get his tally up, but they helped the team so much. Um, you know, and you start, they put a bit of daylight between you and the opposition. Other than that, I think of, you know, he's running in behind constantly. He was running with confidence because he knew he had people behind him that could slip him in. And then as a front three, him, um, Marcus and, and Mason, I just thought they, Chef United were just thinking, what, how do we deal with this? You know, with that, with Pogba and Fernandes in behind, it was, it was frightening. But yeah, and you know, it was nice watching him at the end. His first hat-trick, um, and he was just smiling and beaming at the every time he talked about his game and his interview, he was beaming about getting a hat trick and you know even assisting. He was like, I'm not sort of not selfish. Assisted, he tried to assist um, Marcus as well when he went through. So he just said it, you know, it's about the team. But you can just see as a striker when you play full of confidence, you're enjoying yourself. You know, you end up with things like that, and it's just good to see. Yeah, Wes, I mean, credit where it's due. Under Oli, obviously a great centre forward himself. Do you think Martial has improved? in that position under all his coaching. Yeah, I think he has. And, you know, he was on fire yesterday, Stu. And from the off, and Marcus as well had a few chances early on. You know, Sheffield, first of all, Sheffield United are a good team. You know, they've, they've played well all season and they don't get beat like that very often. And we absolutely dominated everything yesterday. Like Webb said, they just couldn't handle um, the movement, the pace. And we could have been 3 nil up in the first 12 minutes, you know. Um, but, Mar I mean, Martial... He was on fire, and I was so happy when he come off. That's the most I've seen him smile. It was brilliant. He just the camera kept going on him, and he was just smiling. So I was so I was well happy for him. Um, but it's looking really well, and the partnerships um, that are going on around the pitch is, is looking better. And the, we were moving the ball well. Every player, um, the fit, the front three was was always a threat for Sheffield United, and and like um, Webb said, they just didn't know how to handle us. Um, so it was. I just hope it keeps going. But it was. Um, you know, a great game for him yesterday. Yeah, amazing. I mean, it's seven years since the last player scored a hat-trick for United in the Premier League. Yeah. Van Persie. Too long, of course, but um, when the lads are in that sort of form with then Bruno and Pogba behind, uh, anybody's going to struggle to stop them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do, you know, do you know why Bruno and... Um... Bruno and Pogba were so good? It's because Matic just sat behind them. I thought he was excellent, you know. To, to let them get up with it, really. When you've got a player like that who can just, um, you know, cruise through a game and and having the reassurance for the lads in front of them just to go and express themselves. Um, yeah, Masha, I've got the attribute, which is absolutely fantastic. But um, I, th I think a big thing goes towards uh, Nemanja Matic. I thought he was absolutely outstanding as well. Just ran the show, kept it simple but allowed the lads to, uh, to express themselves. you agree with that, lads? Because Matic, is, is just before the lockdown, uh, suddenly looked a different player in terms of overall fitness and, and mobility. And, and, and again, he showed what an important player he is for United last night. I thought it was superb as well. I really, really did. It's only the fact that somebody else gets a hat-trick and the rest of the team plays so well that it does that you have to really... Uh, look at the game to see what he did, but he was he was excellent. Broke up a lot of the ball. He's, he started a lot of the moves when he broke it up. He kept it simple, gave it to the boys who he, who could go and do the magic. And he just you're right. He looks like he's you know taken four or five years off him. Just he's, you know he's got a spring in his step. Uh, and sometimes when you're out the team like he was at the first part of the season, that's what it takes as a catalyst to say, okay, I need to step it up again and just watch from the side. And then um, he's clearly gone out there and. 
in a competitive midfield, you know, trying to make sure he keeps that place? I mean, yeah, I mean, you think you've got Matic there. Fred didn't even, Fred has played every game. I think he's played 22 or 23 league games on the, on the spin, didn't, wasn't involved. Tom and I only a, a late sub. Uh, all of a sudden, our uh, midfield options look different, don't they? They look very different from three or four different types of players. Um, and the squad looks strong. Do you know what? I think Matic, um, like, like we just said, he was, he was out for, he, he wasn't getting in the team for a while. Um, but I think since Bruno's come back and, you know, everyone understands that that combination between him and Pogba finally might get going, that place is now up for grabs again because it was Scott and Fred at the beginning and they, they um, combined really well together. But the team, like you said, has changed a little bit now. And Matic is, um, we all know what a class player he, he, he is and he wasn't playing too well and he's decided and... That and I'm going to get back in the team. And experienced players and world class players do that, Stu. You know, you can go through a bad patch. Um, and he's he's come back into the team lately, and he's kept like Maisie said, he's kept it simple. Um, he's kept everything tight. He's winning the ball back. He's looking sharper, and he's just letting them two sort of get on with it. And I think teams are worried about sort of the five up front with um, Bruno and and Pogba pushing on. But Matic is just cleaning up at the um, just in, sitting in the middle there, nice and easy, playing simple passes, winning the ball, um, starting off the play, and it sort of all fits together. All the talk has been for a long time about Pogba and Fernandez. Will they play together? Can they play together? I mean, and you saw it last night, Ben. Was it what you expected it to be? Yeah, and it'll only get better. Um, I actually didn't think Paul had as big an impact in the game last night as he did when he came on against Spurs. But you can you can definitely see, I mean, the little chip that he played over the top for Marcus when you think, oh, he's going to smash this home and he just sort of lost his footing and, and missed his kick. These are the sorts of things that these two players in particular can do for Manchester United. Um, and, you know, the boys are talking about Matic. I thought last night he was, he, he, you know, it was unfortunate that Anthony Martial, for him, got the hat-trick because I thought he was brilliant, rejuvenated. Um, he does look as, as though he can get about the pitch a lot easier. And he's making he's making passes that I wouldn't have seen him make before he, he actually, you know, had a spell out of the team. He was, he was a little bit safer. But last night he was firing balls into people like Fernandez and Pogba. And, and breaking the lines, and, and I thought he was excellent. But I think the partnership between Pogba and Fernandez is only going to get stronger and stronger. And with that, it's only going to worry more and more back lines. And that's what did you think of the, the fact that obviously we're playing behind closed doors? But I thought it had been decorated brilliantly the stadium with the 40,000 faces of fans and, and the various banners. And obviously, it's strange, but Dan, it does at least mitigate it a little bit by dressing the stadium in that way. Yeah, it, it, there was a there was a presence without a presence being there. You know, it was actual fans that had uploaded their picture um, and were present at the game in spirit at least. And it looked great. The stadium looked as good as it can be without fans. You know, it helps when the sun's shining and you're playing the kind of football that you are. But it's it, it was well something well thought out. I think you know we've seen other other teams do it where they've where they've probably just got a Zoom screen or whatever, and you can't get the amount of people that, that we had. Um, you know, in in the picture. So yeah, it was it was it was well thought out, and it, it just the stadium looked great. To be fair, just before we move on, talk about the the next game in the FA Cup. Um, we're going to be in the unusual situation tonight, aren't we, of, of supporting Manchester City because uh, we need them to take points off Chelsea, don't we, Maisie? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, do you know what? It's probably one of the one of the games I'm actually looking forward to. The other games, I didn't I, I didn't see anything in Liverpool last night. I don't even know what the score was. Apparently, the one. You don't want to know. You don't want to know. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, that's inevitable. They're going to go on and win it. But I think tonight could be a um, tough, tough game both ways. You know, Chelsea are at home against City. City obviously still need the points. But um, no, I, I, obviously everyone's hoping that, you know, City go on and win it because it, you know, helps us close the gap. But, um, but it's a tough game either way. So um, fingers crossed, you know, City can get something out. Next up for United, uh, a trip to Carrow Road, Norwich in the FA Cup quarter-final Saturday evening. I speak now to a man who had a terrific career with Norwich and Northern Ireland. Paul McVeigh has been good enough to join us on the group chat. How you doing, mate? Good to see you. Thanks, man. Um, well, how you doing? Yeah, we're all good. We're all good. I mean, uh, Norwich, obviously, it looks very, very difficult for them in terms of staying in the, in the Premier League. In a way, 
will this be a, a bit of a release for them on Saturday with the pressure of points not there? I suppose that they'll still probably be feeling the pressure, knowing that you know it's inevitable that Liverpool are going to win the league. It looks inevitable that Norwich are going to get relegated, but I think the pressure's still on because they're still coming up against the a team in United who are just flying at the minute. You know, you boys must be delighted seeing your team doing so well because they really are on, on such a rich vein of form. And and yeah, and, and ironically, I was at the at the game with Trafford, the game earlier in the season. And yeah, it was just it was men against boys. Unfortunately for for Norwich City and and especially especially Rashford was was almost unplayable that day. So yeah, it's it's going to be a tough game, and I don't know about the pressure being off. Probably even more pressure because when you keep losing and keep losing and not getting that win, yeah, that's where it becomes really tough. Let's open it up to the lads. You want to work with Paul, Ben? Morning, Paul. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm well, thanks. How are you doing? Nice week. <laughs> London buses, eh? Yeah. Have they, um, have they got any chance of getting out of the position that they're in? I heard uh, Daniel Farker's um, interview at the weekend and he said, oh, we've only got to win five out of our last eight games to be in with a chance. But for a club that have barely, you know, been away from the foot of the table for most of the season, it, it, is the inevitable going to happen? They're not going to survive, are they? No, it's, it's you know, if, if you have, you know, half a... And, modicum of knowledge about football it's not gonna they're not gonna survive but the good thing about Norwich City is just how well they run you know similarly to United they're such a well-run club obviously completely different levels but because they haven't spent you know an inordinate amount of money on you know bringing in star players everything that Norwich do are about the team everything's about sustainability the owners you know Stuart Webber the director of football the manager everybody's doing this for the long term. So even if, you know, the inevitable happens and Norwich get relegated, obviously mathematically they could, but they probably will get relegated. Next season, they're going to be in such a great position to come back. And that's that's probably what most clubs are aiming for, to try and get in the position of a Norwich City, that if you're not going to be sustain, sustaining your Premier League status, well then let's get back down to the Championship to get straight back up again. Well, how are you, mate? Go ahead, Dan. Go on, Dan. Um, your your job now is motivational speaker, isn't it? That's what you do with performance. So if you if you were in front of the lads now, what would be what would you say to them? What would be your speech? Oh my goodness, you are putting me under pressure here, aren't you? So like a well, listen, I, I should probably just put this into a bit of context as well. That fortunately, um, since I stopped playing ten years ago, I also worked as a sports psychologist for seven years, with two years with Norwich and then five years with Crystal Palace, where ironically. My first day on the job at Palace was Aaron Wambasaka's first day at Crystal oh. Palace. So I had five years there with him. And, and at the minute, it's not really about the results. You know, it, it, everything that the footballers do, it's all about performance. It's all about the process. It's all about, you know, what can you do to control your position in your part of the game? Because even if you're playing well, you know, the other 10 players on the team still might not be playing at the level. So I think that that's what Daniel Farker needs to come across. And, and I think that's what they're doing. And I think that's the bottom line. Norwich are playing as well as Norwich can play. They're probably playing to their potential. You know, and if they could add a little bit more quality in terms of the goal scoring, and obviously with the likes of you boys have, you know, especially like Martial, the minute's absolutely flying. You know, if we just need someone to have a bit of, someone to put the ball in the net. But in terms of what they're doing, I think it's really difficult for Daniel Farker to get much more out of this team. He really is doing a fantastic job with the quality of players he has. And that's that's not taking anything away from him because I think they've done incredibly well to even be in the Premier League in this this sort of this stage of the journey. Where's all, Macy? Yeah, Paul. You all right, mate? You okay? Good, man. Good. Paul, my question is, like you've, you've touched on there, that they're a very well-run business. Um, you know, even if they do go down, the, the chances of them coming back up are, are very high. Um, because, you know, they don't spend too much. But do you, do you not think sometimes if you are in the Prem at some point, if they do get back in, if they do go down, do they have to take that gamble, you know, buy a few better players? Or it just seems to me every time Norwich come up through the years, they always go back down. Does that make sense? And I understand what you're saying, very well-run business. But surely at some point they've got to say, well, we, we've now got to stay in the Premier League and, and start pushing ourselves up the table. 
I think I think you're right, and it's it's definitely getting there. I think it's it, there's obviously a, there's a point, and, and I think it's simply risk and reward. You know, at what stage do you gamble, spend all your money, put all that money that you get for promotion, which is it 150 million now that you yeah. get? You know, at what stage do you spend all that? Because look what Fulham did. They spent yeah. over 100 million, didn't stay in the league. Look at Aston Villa. They spend a huge amount of money. So, again, it's, it depends what your gamble is because if the gamble is just spending the money, well, we know that doesn't work. Sometimes it does, but loads of times it doesn't. You know, and even, even your big rivals, Leeds United, are probably the best example of seeing something going wrong once they spend all the money. So, I think in terms of it, it's really about sticking to your principles and the values of Norwich City are the way that Norwich are run, and especially because this is driven from you know the hierarchy with, with Delia Smith and Michael, her husband, Michael Wynn Jones, because they invested in 20 years ago as a family business. But of course, football has evolved over those 20 years. It's not a family business anymore. It's a global enterprise. And, and whenever you think Norwich are probably overachieving just being in the Premier League with the budgets and the way that they run the club. So I, I wouldn't like to make that decision because it's almost like if you spend the money, and it doesn't work out, you're going to get criticized. If you don't spend the money, then you're going to get criticized. So here, our, <laughs> we're, all, we're all aware of that in football, aren't you? get criticized either way. Yeah. Crazy. I, I, I think this, this, this weekend's game is a game where... Is that the helicopter? Is that? is that the helicopter coming to land there, will it? Chop, it, chop us out for you, Maisie. <laughs> I said there's no more drilling. <laughs> that must be lunch getting served, is it? <laughs> be more than that, Bob. I, I, th I think this weekend is a game where Norwich can actually affront you. Obviously, you talk about games and um, being being no pressure, but to, this weekend's game, there's absolutely no pressure on. All the pressure's on Man United. Everybody expects Man United to win. And I think this, this weekend is a game where you know, it's, it's a game where Norwich can think, well, you know, we're going to lose or they can approach it thinking they're going to lose. But they have everything to gain. You know, you can get through to the... Is it semi-finals you can get through to now, Stu? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Through to, you know, Wembley appearance and, you know, they can go on from there. So, Man United this, this weekend, it's a, it's a tough game. So much everyone's writing Norwich off. This <clears> game's a game where, you know, Norwich could think, well, do you know what, lads? We've got a great chance of getting to Wembley, yeah? Let's get out there and important performance. I do expect United to win, like, but but that, I think that's listen. The reason why probably you know we've all done what we've done is because probably we've been in that scenario where you're going to the game and everyone's expecting you to lose, except for you. Yeah. Have you ever walked onto the field thinking you're going to lose this match? Because I don't think I have. No. I definitely know in terms of you know the work I'm doing now. That is probably one of the key differences I see in terms of people who are probably the most successful and people who I know are kind of achieving what they want to achieve. It's because of this mindset that just says, no matter what the scenario, no matter what the circumstances, I'm going out to achieve this. And no matter what happens, I'm still going to achieve it. So yeah, okay, United probably will win this weekend, but there is no way in the world that any of those Norwich players, Norwich staff, or even the fans, there might be some fans who I think they were going to lose, and I tell you, I speak to a lot of Norwich fans and they think they can win because we've beat Man City at Carrow Road this season. You know, so if we can beat Man City, we can beat Man United, we can beat Liverpool because at any stage on any day, ha Norwich have that opportunity to, to put off a result like that. So yeah, completely agree with what you're saying. Highly likely United are going to win. Massive, massive pressure on United. Probably very little on Norwich, but there's no way they're going out there thinking they're going to lose. Paul, it's been great having you on, Paul. We really appreciate it. Really no, appreciate Paul, it, mate. Paul, Cheers, Paul, mate. Enjoy, Enjoy, lads. Take it easy. Paul. Um, boys, just before we do end, um, what is your prediction for the weekend? Because, I mean, Paul didn't sound very confident from a Norwich point of view. What, what are you thinking? Same for United. United the same. Same again? Yeah. Right. Four one for me. Oh, okay. Is that, is that, is that, where's that knocking is that, Is that from you, mate? Sorry, mate. That, that's the electrician tapping away. Yeah. I do apologise, but hey, when you have your car robbed and you have your house broken too, these are the measures you have to go to, Stu. Is that what, is that what, I don't want to, you need to give away your security secrets. Is that what? No, that? no, no. Just, uh, it's just um, a, a spotlight over the front so that 
the assholes who actually broke in. Um, <laughs> might a little bit easy to spot. So yeah. All right, boys. Well, we'll we'll do this again, won't we? Next week. Next week. Shoot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can I just ask, on behalf of uh, Dan, Wes, and uh, Ben, what is a punishment? What What are you going to accept? I'll tell you what. You can, you I'm going to say expect I, get away with it. Bear in mind, Wes was involved in this as well. Whoa, well, steady. Well, we we, well, well, we, we well. sorted this out. Wes was involved <laughs> in this as well. <laughs> we sorted mine out. <laughs> no. Not going down by himself. <laughs> no, you can no effort. You, I tell you what, what a team player you are. It wasn't my fault, Gaffer. It was the rest of <laughs> so what, I so didn't turn up. I didn't what turn up, but Wes was, Wes was 10 minutes late, throwing me under the bus with you. Scandalous. Exactly. This, yeah. this has always been something to do, we've got to do, I've got to do this with Wes. So hang on a minute, I can't, no, can't no, change. No. That, that was a suggestion, Stu. That was a suggestion. And, and I no. proved my point. Yes, we exactly. Court, we had a court day. The board. I, I passed. Yeah. It's gone to the board of me, Wes, and Danny. And the board <laughs> say, obviously, majority decision, three against two. We like Wes. Wes, I don't have to forfeit. So what? A little <laughs> so you like Wes? <laughs> <laughs> so you, hang on a minute. What's all that about? Do Wes ain't doing it because you like Wes. So what is that? This is a bit harsh, that bit. <laughs> right. So what we'll do, we'll have a little sing song and you can do it. I'm singing yeah. happy birthday to you. What about that? That's rubbish. No. We're going to get that's some nice little, 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 nice song. Come so, up with a few songs, Stu. Come up with yeah. a few. Get one of the one of five. So that yeah. you come from right. singing. So this is, now to, this is now rolling over to next week. I've got to come up with. Well, well so I'll we'll, come we'll, up with a few and then we'll. We're not on yeah. the rest of the week, so it's impossible, no. isn't it? So. Okay. We'll come up with one. Are you, no, are you no, no, no nursery rhymes. Can't do nursery rhymes. Are you happy to do that, Stu? Yeah, why not? You're not going to stop what's going on about it, are you? So, yeah. <laughs> All right, something to look forward to next week. Boys, um, if I don't... Uh, I'll see you, Ben, at Norwich. Have a good weekend, boys. Take care. Yeah, mate. See you, everyone. See you later. See you, everyone. Bye, guys.